This is Let's Talk, getting to the root causes of the important issues of the day. This is an on-the-air community forum, and we believe your voice matters, not ours, yours. And we welcome all thoughts and views without judgment. Please join us in the conversation today by calling 415-663-8492 or 8317. Oh, Steve. No. Uh, yes. Please. So what's that, that number was again? one of our co-hosts. Uh, 415-663-8492 or 8317. Your hosts today are foul-mouthed <laughs> Stephen Hurwitz. <laughs> and, Say that. Yes, you did again. And the, word was hit. the lovely Shelley Rugg. Oh, thank you, Paul. At the controls. <laughs> so now when you do call in... Uh, and you must call in. That's all I have to say. Uh, when you do call in, uh, wait for Shelley to say you're on the air and then give us a name, turn your radio down, and please Keep it clean. watch your language. <laughs> Don't take any example from us. Okay. Oh well, uh, so today yes. we're talking about... The what? simple little subject, the oh joyous, a joyous and lovely subject of uh, corporate social responsibility. Oh, my. Or the lack thereof. Or, uh, yes, and this was suggested by you, Stephen, so yes. off you go. Well, I'd like to read just a short paragraph about the uh, Friedman Business Doctrine. If you remember, this was back in the Reagan years. Uh, Friedman Business Doctrine holds that, that ideas of corporate social responsibility, which had become popular in the business world, were undermining the American way of life. The businessmen believe that they are defending free enterprise when they claim that business is not concerned, quote, merely with profit, but also with promoting desirable social ends. That business has a show, social conscience and takes seriously its responsibilities for providing employment, eliminating discrimination, avoiding pollution, and whatever else they may, may be the catchwords of the contemporary crop reformers, he wrote. Instead, he went on, they are preaching pure and unadulterated socialism. Businessmen who talk this way are unwitting puppets of the intellectual forces that have been undermining the basis of a free society for the last decade. And who was it who said that again? Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman, who was a disciple of the lovely Your Ayn favorite. Rand. That Rand hit which uh, Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrugged, and the Fountainhead and all that in which uh, corporations are the only good thing in the planet. Government is always bad. Regulations are always bad. And only industrialists can guide us to a better future. Blah, 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 blah. Ayn Rand, of whom Gore Vidal wrote, <laughs> Ayn Rand's philosophy is nearly perfect in its immorality, which makes the size of her audience all the more ominous and symptomatic as we enter a curious new phase in our society. To justify and extol human greed and egotism is, to my mind, not only immoral but evil. That was back in 1961. And, of course, uh, many of the many politicians in our uh, government, the Speaker of the House, is, uh, is a Randian. They're all Randians. Rand Paul was 
perhaps named after Ayn Rand. Not sure about that, but Ron Paul was certainly a devotee of Ayn Rand. A lot of the Republican Party are devotees. A lot of uh, libertarians out there, people who call themselves libertarians, like uh, Jeff Bezos and uh, and Zuckerberg and a lot of the techie, techie guys are libertarians, which is basically the same thing, which is uh, your interests above all else, their interests above all else, not ours. And uh, that's how the market will shape the economy and the country and will do a better job than anybody else could ever do because we're making profit at it and therefore it must be good. Uh, so, yeah. so that breeds, I mean, that's what corporate, corporations do. That's what companies do. That's what capitalists do. They, they want to make money. They want to make money. And to, enrich the shareholders. And enrich the shareholders. That yeah. is a, and, uh, it's not a legal obligation, but a kind of To the curb with the planet, to the curb with well, the people. Yeah, and there is a history of during the... During American, certainly during American history, there's been these waves of monopoly, monopolies back at the beginning of the 20th century. Teddy Roosevelt was a big trust buster. That was uh, one yeah. of his. Yeah. He's remembered for that. Antitrust laws were very strict. I mean, they were too late to avoid the Great Depression. All, a lot of those trusts were had a hand in that. Uh, and a lot of the big corporations here, including the banks, had uh, a major hand in our previous our little recession back in the well back in the 80s and then just recently anyway um so how do how how do we get corporations who are now actively running or paying for political campaigns they're basically calling the shots in it's washington it's been a complete That's right. capitulation to the corporations and uh in this uh, administration to the fossil fossil fuel industry. So the uh, how do we how is there a way to stop this rampant greed? It's greed and selfishness. It's Randian economics. It's uh, who was it? Milton Friedman. Who was the other one who was there? Oh. Uh, Greenspan. Greenspan. Alan Greenspan. Yes. Remember him? Yes. Oh, I do. Uh, what was it? Over exuberant something or other. Yeah, his famous line before it all crashed around him. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Really? Yeah. Well, he did uh, <laughs> apologize at one yeah, point. Yeah, he apologized. In front of sorry. Congress. Did you see that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, really. Uh, Nathaniel Brandon, whose original name was uh, was Nathan Blumenthal, who changed his name to Brandon because of his love for Ayn Rand, who was actually a lover of hers, and they were having affairs on the side. He was married and... And uh, she was married, but because he was part of her collective, they got together and said, well, I'm going to have a timeshare of your husband. And they all said, oh, okay, whatever you say. Uh, real free thinkers, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, he became this self-help. He's one of the guys who started this self-help guru phenomenon, huge mm multi-billion dollar thing about the self is all that's important. How interesting. Uh, I didn't uh, books, connect that. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, per it's pervasive. So how, so the question is, what can we, what can the man in the street, the woman in the street, the woman in the studio do about, <laughs> do about uh, well, corporations I that don't give back to the community that supports them? Or they're giving us, they're not giving us, they're selling us products well, Maybe. It, I think it's even worse than that. It's not mm. just that they don't give back because they do. They give back if they need to look good quite often. But what is worse is the damage, the destruction that they 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 leave in their wake that they can just pay off. That's the that's how they're responsible to society is by dumping tons of money mm. at their Interests. You know, at, at what they've done, you know, they, they did something that's probably irreparable damage in mm. many cases, and they pay it off. And then they continue to do the same thing. Yeah. Well, there's, it's, it's been cheaper. For example, remember the auto companies? They didn't want safety belts. We don't want seat belts. Nobody wants seat belts because it would cost them something to make seat belts, right? And the, so they fought it. It was, 
it was cheaper for them to fight it through the courts and to pay for people who got killed because they wouldn't put their seatbelts in, right? Uh, it was cheaper for them to do that. Therefore, it was better for them to do that. Hey, Paul, like you asked airbags. what can we do? It's you asked yeah, yeah, that question, what can we do? I would say, first of all, raising uh, people's consciousness about the issues, making more people aware of the situation. I think people yeah, I agree. People live their, their lives, and there's so many things they don't think about. And uh, We need to become more informed yeah. about who is making the things that we buy putting with our, that subject, our money. Putting that subject uh, before the, the public mind, get it mm-hmm. up there. I think that's a beginning of what we can do. Certainly, um, overturning Citizens United would be a, a huge step towards uh, uh, reigning in corporate uh, power. Right now, they have the money. Uh, they can, uh, they can uh, create these blind pools. <coughs> they, uh, essentially, they buy uh, uh, Congress. These people are employed, essentially. And like any good employee, they, they work for their employer's best interests. And uh, so that's um, something we can do. I think another thing, and again, these aren't easy things to do, but I think that we need to um, start applying uh, this notion of fiduciary duty Mm. uh, to corporations. And um, so, what do you mean? Well, that you would define that by a uh, ethical or legal relationship of the highest standard of care. Now, uh, interesting the. that uh, is within the corporations, but amongst themselves, um, uh, you, ha- you you have that between management and shareholders. You can't tell it. You can't pass on false information to the shareholders. You have this duty of due care regarding things like that. Um, but uh, you know, we need to redefine it, which would be the duty to employees. I'd say shareholders, and uh, the biggie is the. Uh, the product or service the, that they provide. The duty to society at large on a whole. I mean, we may be one country here, but we impact the entire planet. You know, corporations especially in ta- impact the entire planet. They certainly do. <laughs> they yes. certainly do. You know, when you have, when you have a company who uh, earns billions of dollars and then... Um, decide that it isn't in their best interest to pay their employees uh, a decent wage. Now, uh, you got to add, even though they might have these uh, corporate social responsibility um, uh, programs, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, it's astonishing, really, when you can think about it. Amazon, for example, the, the most valued, whatever that means, valued stock in the world. Apple, what, trillion actually. Dollar, trillion dollar company. I think Ap- is actually Apple, Apple is, yeah. Uh, don't, the, the, his, some of his employees are still, on, uh, still have to get welfare because he's not paying them enough. He's a, right, so that's an Jeff impact Bezos on... Jeff Bezos is the, one of the most wealthy people in the world. I think he is. Just he I alone. Think he is, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he alone could <laughs> pay for this. Well, there's You're, a lot of beefs. Be, uh, there's a lot of things to complain about with bottom Amazon. Bottom line, the bottom line. And look at what the, the deals they've done with New York and Virgin, um, Virginia. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, basically are not going to pay any taxes. Oh, fine. Oh, boy. Right. Hey, you're listening to Let's Talk on KWMR, Point Reyes Station. Please call in. We want to hear what you think about corporate responsibility, corporate social responsibility. Mm. 415-663-8492. Well, is it even feasible, corporate social responsibility? Yes. Is it? I, I think me? anything's feasible if you choose to believe. <laughs> I think it, it depends on who the, who's managing the company, who the shareholders are, right. and who the board of directors are. Hmm. You know, there must be some corporations out there that we could uh, identify as being socially responsible. Right. Oh, there are. There are to, always choices. To their employees uh, as well as the, community. the services that they uh, they offer. But, you know, the tricky part is that so many uh, companies... Uh, livelihood is based on uh, offering services and in products that are in their in themselves, not a responsible product to sell. Uh, right, right. Hey, so, we have a caller. Can we get yeah, the caller on thanks. the air? 
Oh, Ooh. caller, turn down your phone, please. Your radio. Oh, oh, your radio. I'm sorry. Turn down your radio and tell us your name. I think my name's Charlie Morgan. <laughs> Good morning, uh, Charlie. Let me check my name today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Yeah, uh, it's a tricky subject because everybody has something invested, no matter what level of the economic scale they're on. Everybody has the responsibility to social responsibility. Mm. Um, we're talking, of course, about big corporations. Right. And I think Steve hit uh, on what we could do, and that is, you know, their running dogs are the Congress, whom they buy regularly. And I think it's us for us people that are uh, being really pushed further down as far as uh, being able to earn a buck because uh, people are always, you know, the big boys are always fighting the unions and whatnot. But if we pay attention to who, what politicians and members of Congress mm. support these people. Good the point, big, yes. The big corporations. It's but, pretty easy to identify, Charlie. Just the Rep- Republican Party uh, oh, acts no. pretty much in unison regarding this. Well, but, I'm sure it happens on the Democratic side absolutely. as well. Well, it's just... It's just I'm looking around for where we can be empowered. Yes. Because we reach out almost with a broken arm when we try to operate through Congress or have done for, you know, several years recently. Um, You know, when I ask myself what I can do, what I can do is hunt down who, which politicians have been bought by whom and Mm -hmm. uh, hit them in the pockets, you know. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that's odd, too, is you mentioned Apple. I mean, it seems like in every other way, the most progressive uh, person who probably leans middle to left would um, break their legs to stampede into an Apple store when the latest phone <laughs> came out. Yeah, And, uh, you know, as long as that's become sort of a more like a fad, almost. Uh, right. Also, in a matter of, uh, you know, maybe you're hip and cool if you have the latest phone. But I think people need to look at that because it's sort of like they're divided. On one hand, I think a lot of those people probably politically are, you know, fairly progressive. But, boy, you know, it's like people, uh, you know, buying the latest uh, Nike shoe, you know. or Right. Uh, Right. Our culture has conditioned us to have these these kind of thoughts. I need the next, you know, the next latest thing. And I think that's definitely something that we need to awaken our awareness over is how conditioned we are. Yeah, it's a status thing. Charlie, you're bringing up a huge issue uh, in terms of how we as the public uh, spend our money and who we reward. Every time we put a dollar down, it's a reward for the company who is manufacturing or marketing that product. Uh, the problem I see is that getting people together to understand that uh, that concept and uh, become aware enough uh, to judge who they are and what they're buying and whether that company uh, is actually uh, acting in their best interest and, and thus withholding their purchases based on that. Hmm. It's, uh, exactly. it's a very, very difficult. Well, and I think even more, you know, is uh, uh, is actively reaching out to companies when, especially if it's a company that we've enjoyed and we find out information about that company that uh, is uh, we don't like, uh, we should be vocal about it. We should write to the company. We should call a company and say, hey, here's what I don't like, yeah. and I won't be shopping uh, your product until this changes. Mm. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, people don't say anything, and so there's an assumption that, that, yeah, that see, everything's I, that, okay. Again, it's a matter of scale. I could see that working with a local store or a town, a city the store that's in a city or maybe five cities or something. But these multinationals, for example, and other big conglomerate corporations, the, there's 7 billion people in the well, almost nowadays, 8 billion you know, people in the world. They don't care. With social media, <laughs> you could organize. You could well, you can, do yeah, a sure. mass. Boycotts, boycotts you know. have happened in the right. past, and they've worked to a certain extent. But 
you know what what do you do when uh, AT&T does something horrible which they are always trying to do and when they're the only phone company what do you do when PG&E starts a fire right. and kills people and they're, they're, yeah. they're the only people you can get power from you know how what what you're going to boycott PG&E oh, I don't think so well we do have monopolies there's no <laughs> question Candles. about that Candles, well, what about yeah. the other situation where you have uh, someone like Nestle's or a large food company really uh, they've all decided to sell us our water in plastic bottles. Mm-hmm. Now, again, raising the consciousness about that issue gives people the opportunity not to buy their water in a plastic bottle. And, uh, I mean, even at Whole Foods, they do have water uh, containers with fresh spring water. You c- could fill mm-hmm. a bottle with water if you didn't want to buy. Uh, I just want to add one other thing about these corporations is that they don't really care what they sell. What they want to do is be in the right market at the right time. Mm -hmm. So you have big companies like Kraft, Nestle's, et cetera, buying natural food companies, Mm -hmm. organic food companies, not because they believe in the market for that product, but they see that as a growing product, a growing market, and they just need to be there. Well, they're not in the product business. They're in the money-making business. That's what corporations are for. Right. Mm. Correct. So how do you how do you count Most. that? How can yeah? Well, sure. I mean, that's what all business is about, right? Well, if you I listen mean, to yeah. Milton Friedman, this is a cornerstone of of, uh, of American uh, life. Anything else is socialism. The Chicago School of Economics. Yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah. interestingly, is since <laughs> I'm on that, since I mentioned socialism, they've done they've just checked in. The next generation, this new generation, socialism does not have the same impact as a word that it did for their grandparents, right. which was, uh, you know, evil. You mean Stalinism? Yeah, right. So, you know, that's something that's, you know, pretty new. And so you could have uh, Bernie Sanders calling himself a democratic socialist and uh, people getting behind that. The mm-hmm. word socialist didn't, doesn't phase doesn't them at all. That same yeah. connotation that yeah. it used to. Yeah. It has happened in the past. There was a the Farm Labor Party in Minnesota, where a governor actually, Floyd Olson, called out the National Guard to protect the people who were on strike mm. instead of beat the hell out of them. So every once in a while, there's a little glimpse into U.S. history mm-hmm. where people, uh, you know, working people got together and, uh, you know, demanded uh, to be represented a right. little better. But at any rate, Great show. I'm Thank you, Charlie. I'm going to get off now. Yeah. All right, I'm Charlie. Well, thanks for calling. I mean, if I had an Apple Watch, I'd go yell at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Siri. Thanks for your show, you guys. You're great. I'll be right. listening. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. All right. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, and uh, you know, talk about history. Uh, the the political the political and economic system that is now ruling most uh, certainly Europe and Britain and the United States and most of the Western, if we can still call them Western states, is uh, is neoliberalism, this thing, the neoliberal economics, which was Thatcherism, Reaganism, where the market decides what's best. Government is evil. Market decides. Take away regulations. Uh, uh, business, is, business is always good. Uh, privatization. Of education, which is very scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, education. Of Privatizing course, yeah. education. Prisons. No. <laughs> God, Bad. A, anyway, that was on, it's only been like 45 years that that all started, that that all really came to a head. So it, and it was, it was with Friedman and all those guys. It was all like in the past 50 years that this has happened, that suddenly the market is king and that everything the market does is good for society and that people who don't like it are socialists. And it became about because of the power of unions. After the last period when the, the super wealthy and the corporations were, were trying to beat down the working man, uh, they formed unions, right. and it became a threat to the ruling classes, the, right. to all the wealthy and all the wealthy companies. And so they started this whole thing. They they just started saying, "Oh, wouldn't it be better if the marketplace did this?" And the, the all these all these union members are just troublemakers, and they're driving up prices, and and they're communists, and all. Well, that. and it's all the storyline. Yeah. 
they're they're putting out the storyline and it's up to us to stop and think about that storyline and and decide if there could possibly be a different one. I think that's a good point. Yeah. We got to we got to start creating a different story. Different story. Yeah. Okay. That uh, maybe regulations. Government for the people, by the people. <laughs> maybe regulations on industry sometimes help people. I think, think that's they a- <laughs> do. <laughs> you know, when you say we need to change the story, you know, what you're up against, though, are people who have unlimited funds to mm-hmm. protect and propagate their own story. And then you have people who need to uh, band together collectively to present something else, which is, right. you know, that we're uh, woefully uh, under undermatched compared to this. Of course. Well, so I'm going to make a pitch for small business, you know. Oh. Support, support small business. Local business. Yeah. In fact, people like our underwriters. Yes, hey, exactly. There you go. Oh. What a segue. Oh, I know. Well, I guess I could, <laughs> I could move forward with that. Yes. Did you know that KWMR is supported by the College of Marin, offering degrees and certificate programs designed to prepare students for in-demand careers? and associate degrees specifically designed for a transfer to a California State University campus. Now students can earn a Sonoma State University degree through classes offered at College of Marin's Kenfield campus. Registration for spring classes is online at marin.edu. Horizon Cable is one of our underwriters. High-speed Internet services for KWMR are underwritten by Horizon Cable, now cable casting KWMR on television channel 47 in Point Reyes Station, Alima, Inverness Park, Inverness, and Dillon Beach. Online at horizoncable.com. KWMR is supported by Ken and Sam Levin Window Cleaning. Helping West Marin, the San Geronimo Valley, and the North Bay see clearly for more than 25 years. Additional services include clearing gutters and downspouts, as well as cleaning solar panels. They make house calls and can be reached by email at Ken and Sam Levin at gmail.com or at 415 663 9669. Thank you, underwriters. There. Yeah, and support so your local business. KWMR is a nonprofit. There's another mm-hmm. area that could use some support. Mm-hmm. Uh, nonprofit organizations uh, rely on the community to fund them. Right. And so there's there's the capitalist model, but you know. And, well, right? yeah, and sometimes uh, corporate money comes to you know to cleanse the corporate money to cleanse their image. They donate. To nonprofit, although right, right. I have to say, I was just you know this morning, Patagonia. Patagonia's CEO is donating the company's entire ten million dollar Trump tax cut to fight climate change. So, Patagonia's always had this uh, clean and healthy image, and I think that's uh, that the, supports that. You know, they're going along with that. Uh, so they're going to donate ten million dollars to nonprofit groups who work on issues related to climate change and the environment. Well, I love that it's it's leader. They're providing leadership, yeah, essentially yeah. for other people to come forward and do something like that. Their their products, I guess, are good. I've never been able to afford them. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're talking about I get them secondhand. Uh, Support your local thrift store. Corporate social responsibility. Uh, do you think corporations should? have social responsibility. What is their responsibility? Do right. do corporations have a responsibility other than making money? Please yeah. please call in four one five I think six six three eight four nine two. Well we're we're trying to entice the callers. Yes. Okay. I think that their uh, I think their responsibility to the community begins with the product or service they provide. And uh I mean that's fundamental. If they're if they're providing something that is uh Harmful or dangerous to the community, to the people that buy it. Oh, like those single-use coffee pods? Keurig. Mm. Yeah. Or, you know, intensive sugar. uh, Sugar, salt, and fat, these are the the ingredients for most junk food. Tobacco. Right. Hey, we have a caller. Caller, you are on the air. Please tell us your name. Yeah, my name's David. Hello, David. Hey, David. David. Hello there. 
Um, well, first of all, I want to just give a shout out to one of my very favorite products, which is a product that many people buy with the express purpose of throwing away. Ah, what is this? <laughs> Plastic trash bags. Mm, yeah, you yeah. Buy this so you can put it in your trash. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about absurd. Yes. But well, that's yeah. not why I called. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. Um, well, Stephen just alluded to corporate responsibility, and you know, corporate responsibility really their primary responsibility by law is to their stockholders. Paul, you mentioned this very early on. Hmm. By law, they they have to. Uh, put their stockholders first. Maybe and we need to change the laws. Huh? Well, well, is that actually a law? Because I've I've said that before, and somebody called up and said, you know, it's not legally binding. It might be in their it might be in their corporate uh, the mission statement it's or whatever. Probably in what their best it? interest. Well, stockholders have sued corporations. Now, I uh, actually, you know, you call that into question. I'm I have heard the same heard that. So I should research that before I go promulgating it on on uh, local radio. That's okay. But, but yeah, I always I always thought there was this legal obligation. But doing a little uh, homework this week turns out maybe not so. It, it may just be in the charter of the of the corporation. Oh. Well, in any case, in the charter of the corporation, if their primary, like Stephen just said, well, how about first making good products? Um, mm-hmm. uh, and taking care of servicing the customer, having that as their vision, as their mission statement, and then, okay, stockholders, stocks, uh, stock, uh, investing in the stock market's a risk. It's an investment, and hopefully it pays off. But if you invest in a company that where your the guarantee is that their first obligation is to you, mm. that's not a risk. Mm-hmm. That's not you, really an investment. That's you know, just, people use the word investment. I think incorrectly, if I can just interrupt here. An investment is when you put money into something that is going to change something. I mean, I invest in an idea and we start a company, but buying stock is not an investment. Hmm. You're you're, nothing happens except a change of ownership, and the, and the ownership is fairly vague uh, because uh, uh, there are people that own a lot of it who are actually the owners, the people that direct the company. You're sort of on their on their um, coattails, but I'm not investing anything when I buy shares. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it investment personally. It's really not a risk. People do call it I mean, that way. Sometimes it's a risk, but there's definitely risk. It, well, there is definitely risk, but uh, the, the laws and bylaws of corporations are set up to minimize that, at can, least in some cases. Can I just read something uh, quickly? It has oh, to, yeah. the, the founder of Panera, Panera Bread, who mm. had some social uh, uh, concept. This is from him. Wall Street has embraced the idea that companies exist solely to serve the shareholders of their stock. Under this way of thinking, managers of companies should focus their actions on driving short-term value for their shareholders and should pay far less or no regard for other constituents who may have a stake in the business, such as employees, customers, or members of the community. He partly blames activist hedge funds, many Mm. which buy shares in companies with the aim of pushing their management to make decisions that drive their stock prices up within a few months. According to him, this market is more difficult to invest in long-term projects and create sustainable jobs. Mm. Sounds right on. Yeah, those controlling uh, controlling shares by hedge funds, that, that that is all they want to do is make scads of money in the, sh- in the short term in the short term and it doesn't matter how they do it who, you know there is no ethics to this that. was the uh this was the uh, uh the, you they accused uh mitch romney not mitch romney <laughs> mitt, yeah. mitt romney yeah accused him of being what was it um oh what what hedge fund was he part of bain capital bain capital there you go bain that was their that was their business finding bain. companies uh stripping them of assets and then uh, selling off the, I guess, carcass, <laughs> dressing it up, dressing the carcass up, and then. Uh... So uh, that that Panera, the Panera CEO, two years ago or a year ago, took it took Panera private. He made it a private company again to protect it from from activist shareholders nice. like, like these hedge, hedge fund. fund guys. And then he sold it to a European fund 
which also owns Pret-a-Manger, Krispy Kreme, and Keurig, Dr. Pepper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Who knows? That's yeah, so the other uh. thing. Who knows wh- who owns anything now? Right. Like, you have to look closely at the labels. Like, well, who owns Cowgirl Creamery? Yes, mm. indeed. Who is it? Who it, does? A Swiss company, uh, Swiss, I think. Swiss milk company, yeah. And they are reputed to be responsible, mm-hmm. uh, a responsible company. Yes. I would hope so. Reputed to be so. And uh, Well, are you saying, you know, you're sort of implying the way you, uh, you answer those things, that um, there's an edge, there's a predisposition to assume that a, a corporation is not by its very nature uh, responsible. Well... So when corp- it's like every track record, it's like every yeah track record. I mean, there is a good track record, I think, with the company that bought out Cargo Creamery. We love Cargo Creamery, lovely. Um, but when you hand it, when you hand the power to a a conglomerate, a, a multinational that's you know, it's in Europe. Uh, they have headquarters. I have no doubt in something has New to York, change. Yeah, but something's going to change. It's it's just another piece of their of the bottom line. Every every quarter, they're going to look at that, and if Calgary Creamery isn't doing what they want, they'll say, well, you have to have this kind of cheese because that's what people want Well, now. you could look at it a different way, it's, though. And it's like Lagunitas, a wonderful, lovely local company, now ho- wholly owned by Heineken. And, uh, you know, they're, I, I was talking to uh, an ex-employee who was uh, slightly disgruntled because they're making all these fruity beers now because that's what people want, they say, uh. Heineken says. Well, fruity beers have been a thing in England for a long time, forever. I mean, 30, yeah, well, 30 or 40 years. What's it done for them? <laughs> so we know who doesn't like fruity beers here. But, you know, I would just I would just uh, uh, suggest something else. It's not always uh, uh, a larger company buying out a small one is not always uh, ne- necessarily detrimental. No. It might be that, uh, that a larger company can add uh, uh, the money it takes to uh, – to spread that uh, some sure. a company that's doing well on a, to a wider audience, absolutely and, to a wider audience. And but it this... might be it might be not in their interest to change stuff. You say they change, it, you know, you adulterate the product, and all of a sudden people say, "Well, this is what it used who's to gonna be." Who's going to say anything? Because there's no local control anymore. We can't well, control what Lagunitas does Well, the does people that buy the counter. cheese, the people that buy the cheese, could say, "Wait a minute, this doesn't taste like the cheese that I that I like." Hmm. But no. not that many people will actually say things like that. That's true. And well, if I'm a buyer of the cheese and it doesn't taste the same you'll way. You'll stop buying it after a while, right? But, well, the, but the new people who buy the cheese based on their reputation. Yeah. They don't know the difference. Right. They're used to, well, it tastes this way. This is true. A new norm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a new norm. Yeah. yeah. I'm signing off. Thank you all. Well, thank, thank you, for, thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Bye. 415-663-8492. Give us a call, won't you? We're well, talking about corporate social responsibility. Does it exist? You know, it's funny. When I was <laughs> years ago... Uh, Sometimes. Years ago when they were attacking the uh, the tobacco industry and Congress was really nailing them, mm-hmm. I read something. I can't remember where where they said uh, the fast food industry, the food industry said, next they'll be coming after us. Mm-hmm. This was... 20, who knows, how many years ago, 20, 30 years? Yeah. And I thought, what do they mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> sure enough. Well, yeah, unhealthy, unhealthy products. Um, and uh, simpler for them, cheaper for them, better for the bottom line to just keep making that stuff and fight it in the courts if someone sues you for having a heart attack because they ate too many Whatever it's you know Big Max whatever, uh, it's cheaper for them to to fight it in the courts than to change their product line. Although they are changing their product line, we may and we pay for their misbehavior. Uh, if there's a company that is, uh, uh, if there's an industry that's behind obesity, and which causes uh, which is a large contributor to uh, health problems, mm. and then we end up covering that by our insurance, by our hospitals, etc. You know, they're just deferring uh, well, costs yeah, to the, is to that the public. Their, is that their problem? As long if people if people go and buy those products, they're heavily promoted. 
Yeah. They're, and they're cheap. And they're, they're actually not food. They're food products. Right. Food, oh, food-like products is really what they are. And right. they're engineered. They're, this is, they're words, not cooked. Two words that should never go together. Food science. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, we have a caller. Caller, you are on the air. What's your name, please? My name is Paro Oshiokam. And I think you're talking around the subject because Uh basically democracy and capitalism are antagonistic, and we've lost the vote. We have to take money out of capitalism, uh, out of government, I mean, and let capitalism do what they did. I mean, uh, Okay, so... uh well, how do you how do you take the yeah how do you do that take the money out of capitalism what do you do well i this is it's gone gone too far i think we've got to a crisis point because it used to be a free press and we had the newspapers and all of that organization and they bought it lock stock right and yeah and that has put us in a terrible place because Let's face it, 90% of the people, they, they just watch 24-hour in the news and go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And they don't question anything. Right, right. And that's, that's part of that awareness that we need to start uh, expanding for people is to, to st- look things yes. up, to ask questions, to think about it. Critical thinking, um, I think yeah, you call that. That's right. You know, corporations, I think this thing with Amazon has horrified me that uh, Bezos now says he's going after food production. Oh he's God. going to own the world. He, uh, the, my big beef with Amazon, one of them anyway, uh, there's a list, is they, um, they practice a, a, a capitalism that is uh, voracious, really. If a, if a smaller company uh, comes up with something that's a great product, they'll put all their uh, money behind a comp- competing product which essentially puts the other one out of business. It's the Starbucks model of uh, of capitalism. Yeah, no, I mean they've done it, and you know, even with let's face it, I'm talking to you on the telephone. Um, <laughs> you go back right. to the Greeks. You go back to the Greeks, and they sat around and they talked. Well, that's that's yeah. We may be headed in that direction. You know, we're going to have to pare down everything because yeah. this world could crash and burn. In a heartbeat. And you just mentioned European or companies. Flood. Marin. I happen to be a, a Western European, but the fact is they don't have the land and the, and the incentives to do. So they're looking overseas. The, my favorite goat cheese, it's gone, owned by Europeans. <clears throat> hmm. What about West Marine Cheese Company out there, the cheese factory? Gone. You know, Calgary, gone. These people, they know what they're doing. Hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. You're doing the work, and they're buying it up. Right. They're going to cheapen it and sell it because they own the magazines, they own the advertising, and people just, you know, I don't watch television anymore because uh, the programs are just fillers for ads. Right, sure. right. It's all marketing, especially for kids. You know, cartoons are all about marketing something. My wife left me because I wouldn't let my kids watch television. <laughs> I got Aww. news for you. My kids didn't grow up with TV, and it did not. <laughs> didn't help? No, it didn't. Come well, may have. Well, we may have. In the great 60s when we Video could, games, though. Uh, we could leave college and do things. Kids now don't want to do things, and if they do, they're already bought because with a student loan, they won't go protest. They you know, I have to apologize. That's different. They're not willing to experiment. Hmm. Mm, interesting. Well, uh, the, 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 if they have a button on it, they don't, they're not interested. I, I, I'm an old motorcyclist, and there's no kids doing motorcycling anymore. They're a minority. And there used to be gang loads of motorcycles around. I remember the motorcycle <laughs> gangs in London. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, you know, they're very, they're very valid. You know, just think about all the music and everything, and the, the connection to Richard Thompson and all the clash and all that. Yeah. It's just fine. And people, you know, that's what they did. It was their outlet. And mm-hmm. I remember I was working for a small company uh, here in, uh, in, well, in San Francisco, actually, and I, I got a hold of the boss. Well, he was a small company. And I says, you know, you're not listening to us. Mm. And he says, no. 
And I said, you know, uh, we've got a voice and we, 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 we've got ideas. And he says, look, if you want democracy, there's the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. The corporate structure is a pyramid. So mostly. And it is not democratic. No. no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, I know there are some companies that have started up that are all um, worker owned. Worker owned. Yes, it's fabulous. a different business model. Yep. And I'd like to see more of that. Sure. In fact, it has saved Spain. The co-ops, and I grew up with right. co-ops in a country like Ireland, which I call a third world uh, bankrupt country in Western Europe. Mm. Uh, they survived because all the farmers got together and made co-ops. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because the Brits took everything, including the toilet paper from the left in 20 years. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of the solution is that we're going to have to, you know, if things fall apart, we have to rely on each other. We have to get small and local well, and come together and help each other. We know that's that right. things are going to fall apart. Oh. Again, that's oh. consciousness. No, and, and the other thing they keep telling us is that if it's new, it's better. And well, yeah, that's the whole... Me and Ned Ludd fight that one. <laughs> the whole, yeah. The Luddites. What they were right. Mind control. Well, thank you very much, Paul. We appreciate it. It's Para. Para, para thanks for calling, Para. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye bye. That's nice. Uh, yeah, so um, certainly advertising. Yes. Major influence oh, yeah, on so what we buy. But, I watch... um, but yes. Oh, please. sorry. Go no, ahead. Go ahead. No, no. You, well, this no, documentary no, that I, job, I watched this good morning <laughs> uh, called The the Corporation, uh, it's a little over two hours long, so I didn't quite and, see the whole thing, but hmm. uh, basically they compared the corporate model to a psychopath. Ah. And, and, you know, so psychology can, you know, analyze the corporation, hmm. but corporations enlist the help of psychologists, psychiatrists, to analyze the market for them, to come up with the language and the the emotional hits Absolutely. that come into marketing, you know, and the sure. little bit of marketing training I've had, it's it's all about how do you get them to feel something. Mm. You know, it's often fear. <laughs> That's the big one. Yeah. And that, Envy. Um Jealousy. Feel like you're missing out on something. Yeah, yeah. insufficiency. Yeah. Oh, I don't have the latest one. Yeah. Well, you well, know, how are you I'm gonna not, feel that's better? Not surprising. How it's gonna make your life better. How is that better? surprising though? I mean their business no, is surprising. getting in touch with the feelings and, and aspirations of their customer. I mean mm-hmm. Right, but but it's done in sort of devious ways and I think that's that's kind of the issue is that and uh, back to raising awareness as the number one thing to make a difference is that uh, we have to recognize the marketing for what it is. We have to see it and become aware of it and not just take it in and let it affect us. Well, let's say you make yeah. potato chips, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. When you're... When you're making the packaging for those potato chips, you have you put together groups of people, and they've got these little things, little buttons they push. Sure. And when they show you some combination, you push the right hand for the you'd like it or the left, and they use that data to decide on the colors they're going to Color. choose for the package, the, the copy, the, yeah, the, copy, the, the, the f- style. Yeah. Right. Well, what, I don't blame them. I mean, they want to sell potato chips. I don't like the product, mm. but they're using... Psychology. That's right. Science. It's, right, yeah. right. Exactly. And we know science is good. Uh, 415-663-8492. Give us a call in these last few minutes if you have a comment. Join this discussion about corporate social responsibility. So uh, if everything breaks down, yeah, I, I think we know where, for example, the planet <laughs> conditions on the planet are heading. Yeah, and uh, humanity. It's, it's, it's harsh right now. Uh, it has to be. We ha- uh, we've said this before many times on the program since we since the inception of the program. Localization, of course, and all things. You need to be more dependent on local uh, products, local uh, the community, the people around you, your neighbors, your participate land, in your your, your local community rather than giving everything to multinationals who are just monopolizing everything. I, you know, you're talking yeah. about what we can do, and I think that I'll get back to this. I think that we are subsidizing 
corporations in ways that we're not even aware of it. If a, if a company is allowed to uh, dispose of their waste product into uh, the, in the, uh, into the environment, uh, smokestacks, they're using a, a resource that we that belongs to us. The Cullens, we're, yeah. we're letting them use. They're, we're letting them follow our own resource or our rivers, etc. But they pay they, fines. No, they need. They need to pay. For, <laughs> they need to pay for the use for the use of these uh, products, quote unquote. And uh, uh, it, like the carbon tax is probably the biggest. How about uh, the roads that that deliver their products? You know, all well, that they do stuff. play. They do pay. Uh, yeah, they hey, get guy. tax breaks to be in certain yeah. places too. Yeah. We have a caller. Great caller, show, you are. Guys. Oh, thanks. Show. Who's this? For sure. Uh, one question, though, and I just came uh, on the show recently, so I haven't heard the whole thing. I wonder if you guys had discussed or if you know any real effort to take the rights of a single human being away from corporations mm. to reverse that. Until that happens, I think we're all just kind of urinating in the wind. I'll take the answer off the air. <laughs> Thank you. That was very good. <laughs> urinating in the wind. Uh, yeah, so um, taking away corporate personhood. Yes, absolutely. I don't know the story yeah. exactly, I, I, but I did hear of a local community doing that, um, hmm. deciding as a community we're not recognizing that. Uh, I wish I could. I, I want to say our Arcada. It sounds like Arcada, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, because they're they're always thinking ahead. Um, Another thing we can do, though, I'm uh, just trying to think corporate of corporate personhood. Yes, it's uh, a, it's a it's a. I mean, that's how Citizens United came about, and that's how because we recognize a corporation as a citizen. But we hold I, citizens Scalia, responsible uh, for what they do. We put them in jail. We, you know, and and I just don't think paying fines all the time is mm. really it's cheaper to pay the fine. They really don't you know? go to jail, unfortunately. Yeah. But you know, we're talking about things we can no, do. Normal citizens go to jail. Oh, oh yeah, but uh, you really can do things like uh, divide and conquer, which we're doing now with the state of California. Mm. Uh, California is such a large state that if you if we uh, pass some legislation mm. for uh, for a requirement. Uh, a company either has one choice is to give up the California market mm. or comply with California. And in the process, they either have two products, mm. one for the rest of the country, or they have one product that actually complies with California's. Mm. So, you know, you could you don't have to change the whole country in some respects. You change California. Change a large market. That's right. right. Yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it now. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, pass pass a law that legislation that um, corporations as people have to be good citizens <laughs> of their. Well, you know, yeah. I am the, legal why definition they? of right, good. Right, right. Yeah. How are they allowed to not be good citizens? Well, so uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies su- supply us with things that save lives. Uh, and they overcharge for them, but uh, so are they doing good or are they? Well, being and it good could capitalists? be debated about whether their products actually save lives. Have you heard of those pharmaceutical commercials? It may cause death or blindness. <laughs> you might feel like never getting out of bed again. I would just say that you don't need their product to talk that way, though. Well, how they make it and how they're funded, etc. But. Uh, they do make products that can uh, can change your life dramatically, mm. for uh, good or yeah. bad. Yes, anyway. side effects. That's a that's a trade off. Yeah, I. It's eleven fifty seven. It's time to go. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and uh, thank you to all our callers. It was very interesting today. Thank you, Stephen. I'm sorry about my language, and uh, uh, I want to apologize to my children for saying that <laughs> that not watching TV affected them negatively. It actually had a very positive effect on my children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The disclaimers. I've got to read a disclaimer, too. KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Shelley, for Thank you, Paul. being so adept at the controls. <laughs> and right. um, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. All right.